American Family features everyday families and their extraordinary stories and seeks to inspire each of us to capture our own family's voices of wisdom before those voices are gone. Coming up, the Kurowski family from Wisconsin tells their inspiring story from a simpler time. You can almost feel their feelings. It really means something like a, a heartbeat. My mother raised here on the Oneida Reservation. Dad would be out there walking on water. House full of food, house full of people, at least 12 in our household at one time. The older boys used to make bobsleds. They'd go down the hill, like say 60 miles an hour. I told my mother that my father was in this terrible accident at the mill. We all had to pitch in and do something. This is a story of our family, the Kurowski family of Oneida, Wisconsin. In the 1800s, the people of the Oneida tribe of Wisconsin faced tremendous pressure to abandon their heritage. Much of their land was taken from them. Their children were banished to so-called Indian schools. Their language was all but lost. Their tribal ways discouraged. Life on the reservation began to look more like their farming and working class neighbors. Though it appeared their culture was destroyed, the roots of the Oneida people survived. We are the Onyotiaga, the people of the Standing Stone. And my mother was Grace Margaret Scanador, the full blood Oneida Indian woman raised here on the Oneida Reservation. My father was Peter Paul Kurowski, a Polish immigrant. My father's parents were both born in Poland and they came as immigrants through Ellis Island. My mom and dad had six children. I'm the oldest. I was born during the Depression in 1932. Our next is uh, Shirley. Shirley was born in 1934. Kenneth is the oldest son and was born in 1936. My sister Patricia was born in 1939 and we call her Pat. Jerry was born in 1941. Linda was born in 1947. My mother was more of a quiet person. Um, didn't really talk a real lot. She'd give you the shirt off her back. She'd do anything for you. But she had her principles also. She really liked to sing and she had a really good voice. And uh, a lot of times when she's doing her work in the kitchen or whatever, she'd be singing some song or humming. When we ate, you take your hat off. And you don't drink your soup from your bowl. <laughs> That's not proper. <laughs> that table was always set. All she'd do is pull off the tablecloth and have whoever was there sit down and eat. She was kind of like the glue, like that, that kind of, you know, made things good for the family. She was one of the most generous women I have ever, ever seen in my life. Dad wasn't quiet by any means. He did quite a bit of talking. 
He was not only strong physically, he was strong-willed. Whatever he w w was going to get done, he was going to get done, and he was going to do it. He expected them to contribute, but he was supportive of a lot of people. He always said, you do it right the first time, you won't have to do it again. You couldn't say, well, I don't want that or whatever. This is what we have, and this is what, you know, everybody's going to eat.